We are celebrating the 145th anniversary of the Balaclava Church of Christ today because 145 years ago, a small group saw a need and had a desire to meet together to worship. Although it may have been humble beginnings, Jesus said, wherever two or three are gathered, there I am also. Through the faithfulness and commitment of those that have gone before us and those present, we are still able to continue into the future. The town of Balaclava in the mid-north of South Australia is a beautiful old town with a rich history. The story of this town begins in 1848 when a track was established to transport copper from the Borough Copper Mines to Port Henry, later renamed Port Wakefield. In return for the copper being sent to Port Henry, coal and other supplies were sent back on the return journey. In 1849, the first building in the Balaclava area appeared with early first settlers James and Mary Dunn building a hotel on the Balaclava Hoylton Road. It was about a kilometre out of where Balaclava is situated today. By 1870, Balaclava was beginning to take shape. Charles Fisher established a series of large wheat stores in the hope of bringing farmers to the area and by 1878, there were enough people to form a town council. The first meeting was held in the Balaclava Hotel, now the Royal, on January the 10th of that year. They continued to meet every second Saturday afternoon at that hotel until 1883, when council chambers were built. The History Trust of South Australia records that 550 people called Balaclava home in 1885. The Church of Christ movement was established in South Australia in 1845 when Thomas McGarry moved from New Zealand. A chapel building was constructed in Adelaide on Morford Street in 1846. On March the 29th, 1875, many of the Churches of Christ met together to discuss how to support each other and promote growth. Some of the churches in attendance were Alma, Dalkey, Malala and Two Wells as well as those from a more centralised Adelaide area. The Balaclava Church of Christ was established in 1877. They held their first meeting on October the 14th and members who used to meet in Dowkey at Mr John Fisher's house attended. These included Thomas and Mrs Dalton, John and Mrs Fisher, George and Mrs Dory, H.T. Sparks and John Verco. They began their worship in a building on May Terrace in a chapel constructed in 1878. In 1908, they moved to their current location on Baker Street. Today, the original church building, Centenary Hall, is used as a museum. It is the oldest church building in Balaclava. In 1897, an organ was purchased for the Sunday School. This was the first time music was allowed in the Church of Christ. H. R. Taylor records in the book The History of the Churches of Christ in South Australia, 1846 to 1959, that in 1878, as a result of annual Church of Christ meetings, D. A. Ewers was sent to Two Wells. Ewers later became a minister for the Balaclava Church of Christ. He and Jesse Coburn, the minister sent to Malala in the same year, often visited and supported other local towns, including Balaclava, strengthening the spiritual growth of these early churches and supporting their place in the community. Through this period, funding from within the church community was raised and a tent mission was established. This tent seated 250 people and was moved from location to location between 1903 to 1904. During this year, the tent visited five South Australian locations, including Hamley Bridge, and brought 108 people to Christ. 
S.G. Griffiths came to South Australia in 1909 and in a new tent travelled around the state for three years. He brought more than 700 people to Christ in locations including Malala, Long Plains, Owen, Balaclava, Kadena and Port Piri. These tent missions inspired their local communities and awakened an interest in evangelism and the church in general. Back in those early days, uh, the shepherds, uh, the whitings and webs all come to church in uh, horse-drawn vehicles and uh, we we were picked up out of the farm with uh, the Webb family. Uh, uh, there was Mary and Grace Webb uh, and uh, Bert Webb and Stan Webb and they used to uh, call and pick us up and take us to Sunday school. Quite often we walked to church and Sunday school from out the farm. When Jesus began the church, he knew that like-minded Christians needed to meet together for worship and fellowship to encourage and support one another as we walk and grow in our Christian faith. The church body is made up of people with different abilities and gifts to complement one another and allow the church to function. This has allowed the church to serve the Lord through different ministries, areas and to reach out to the wider community. So we're part of the, the, the world and we, we have great memories of the, uh, the church's action. I particularly remember the youth work that used to go, the Christian Endeavour groups. It was junior and intermediate and senior Christian Endeavour and uh, the, course the senior Christian Endeavour is uh, for young people that had left school and that was the time when you uh, um, sort of chose who your life's partners were in lots of cases. And we used to travel around to different, different churches and different places for their meetings and uh, with an eye on the girls. And, uh, uh, but the local girls were pretty good and we're thankful for that. When I was young, the church was only a mile from us and we frequently worked, walked to it. In the morning at half past ten and then half past two for Sunday school and seven o'clock for gospel service at night. We always went to the three and uh, quite often walked because of petrol rationing through the war. When I was 16, my sister, who was very talented, musician and singer and organist wanted to have time off from, and if she left, went away for a holiday we were out an organist so she, she told me to learn she could teach me to play three hymns so she could go away. So I learnt the three hymns and of course once I could play three I could play 33 and so I've been a church organist ever since. I came here as a young person and my teens. I made my commitment at the Henriksen Mission and I've gone on from there. I, um, I spent time in Endeavour and Sunday School, um, being a teacher at Sunday School, being part of the women's ministry, but I spent most of my life sitting behind the organ because I love music and I still love music. and. Um, I enjoyed uh, the things that uh, we were able to do as far as music and worship was concerned. 
This presentation has given testament to some of the different programs that have and still are serving the community and those that bless our own church family. I grew up in this church and have been here all my life and like others have seen many changes and that will continue to develop with the times as we move forward. What doesn't change is that the Father is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow and the power of the gospel is constant. We just adapt to meet the current needs. Judith and I were at uh, Church of Christ at McGill and in 2006 we came up to Balaclava to live in uh, retirement village and when I went to church, Judith and I met many cheerful people who welcomed us into the church and my wife, who's a bit shy at times, met Merwin, a great person dear father, and they enjoyed working together on several projects and uh, that gave Judith um, a direction for what she could do for others, dear fathers. When I was 15, I gave my life to the Lord and the song they were singing was Jesus, I will trust thee. Can I play it? <laughs> Jesus, I will trust thee, trust thee with my soul. Guilty, lost and helpless, thou can make me whole. There is none in heaven or on earth like thee. Thou hast died for sinners, therefore, Lord, Crucified. I was appointed treasurer of this church back in 1984. So over the last 40 years the church has been challenged in many ways from outside influences. And this church and its uh, members and the people have been loyal to their Lord and Saviour. And as uh, we have been loyal to him, he has blessed this church in so many ways. We've never had an offering drive like so many other churches. Although one day, one of our board members, Andrew, did come out to the pulpit with a meat pie during the service. And he started to eat the meat pie. And he just said very quietly, if all of us gave up one meat pie a week, we could get ourselves out of this crisis we're in. And if we look at the trends, we can easily see a steady, large increase in our giving and over a long period of time it builds up our nest egg and whammo God gives us a challenge a project and so as we celebrate this weekend and reflect on the last 145 years and we look at the present let's look forward with excitement and expectation to the next 145 years and let's keep our Lord and Saviour Jesus at the centre of everything we do and say. Congratulations to the church family on achieving 145 years. Well done, good and faithful servants. And may God continue to bless the Balaclava Church of Christ and all those who are touched by the ministry. I came to this church quite reserved, thinking that um, from past experiences that it could be a bit empire driven and a bit um, a church that I wouldn't feel comfortable being in. And uh, when I come here, I was quite mistaken. And uh, just being here has actually been great for me and my family. Um, and really enjoyed 
Pastor Carl and his and his and his teaching, uh, along with the um, the experience of uh, making friendships and um, lifelong lifelong friendships here in the church. Hi guys, I hope the church will continue to grow and reach the wider community. And I hope it will continue to be a fun, loving, nurturing environment for the next generation to grow up in. And maybe some chocolate during the sermon would be pretty good. Or, no, I reckon popcorn would be better. Mm, let's have both. Yeah, let's have both. <laughs>